What's up everyone? I'm Andrea, your Real Life English Fluency Coach, and today we're taking an in-depth look at a range of British English accents. If you haven't seen it already, I highly recommend you check out this lesson that we did on little known secrets of the British accent, where we had a look at how the British accent can tend to get confused and misinterpreted in American TV shows and movies. In today's lesson, we're going to travel around Great Britain to see a range of accents because there are so many and most of these don't get depicted in TV series and movies. So we don't have time to look at all of them. There are very, very many, but we're going to start off by taking a look at a few in today's lesson. There's got to be a difference between uh, English guys and American guys, right? Um, yeah, there's, there's definitely one or two differences that I've, I've noticed. Um, English guys are like very well put together and they dress really well and they're like very well mannered. Um, but, <laughs> but they're also very restrained. So Emma Watson is really famous for her portrayal of Hermione Granger in the Harry Potter series. But as she has become older, and I think because she's lived in America more, you'll find that her accent has changed a little bit. She does have a modern RP accent, which is quite popular with youngsters today, particularly in London, but also in other parts of Britain. That is to say, she does speak more like the Queen's English, but a more modern version. It's a little bit less formal, and you'll hear it when you see the clip. Um, yeah, there's, there's definitely one or two differences that I've, I've noticed. Um... Now, the first thing we're going to take a look at is the way that she says that I've. You'll actually hear her saying it more in American English. She says that I've, and that is with a tap T sound. So in American English, when you don't pronounce the T, but your tongue hits the roof of your mouth, that is called a tap T. And that is how she says these two words. Now, in British English, we have something similar called a glottal T, and there are usually two ways of saying the T. So, if you heard me the first time, I said that I've. So there, that is called a true T, where you actually hear the T sound. Now, remember, Emma used an American accent here, and she said that I've. So, a glottal T in British English is where you don't hear the T, but there is a sound there. It's more to do with the stopping of the air. So I could say that I've. So you don't hear the T, but I'm stopping the air from coming out of my mouth and then it's released. So it's quite subtle, but you do hear a difference. So the three would be American English, that I've, you can have the true T, that I've, and then you have the glottal T, that I've. So you can notice the difference there if you listen very closely. So just to explain it a little bit further, the glottal T is used when the T comes in the middle of a word or at the end of a word, never at the start. If a T is at the start of the word, we always pronounce it. So you can hear a glottal T in words such as water, so that's a true T where I'm pronouncing the T, water, but with a glottal T we would say water. So that's kind of very cockney, but it is also found in many other parts of Britain where people use a glottal T, it's not just a London thing. Other words such as city, so with a true T, city, and with a glottal T, city. So I'm holding in that air when I'm not pronouncing the T sound and then I release it, so city. It's quite in the throat and there is a sound there, so there is a sound there but you cannot hear the T. And when you have that T sound at the end of words, it might sound like this. So instead of saying light, I would say light. And instead of saying right, I would say right. English guys are like very well put together. Now, if you listen to the way that Emma says put together, you'll notice that the first T is not sounded. 
This is because T is a plosive speech sound. That is to say, when you make that sound, some air is released. So what happens when two T's come together at the end of one word and at the start of another is that first one is not released because it just wouldn't sound right. It would be really strange to try and pronounce them both and say put together. It just seems like too much effort. So to make it easier, that first one comes away and we say put together. English guys are like very well put together. Are you frustrated by finding it difficult to understand fast speaking natives? Then I highly recommend our Fluent with Friends course. In this 48 week course, you will learn with the first two seasons of Friends. Each week you'll receive PDF power lessons, vocabulary memorization software, access to our Fluency Circle global community, and so much more. And the best part is, you can try it right now for free with our three-part masterclass. All you have to do is click up here or in the description box below to learn more and sign up now. We hope to see you there. Now, the schwa sound, which you may have heard about, is probably the most common sound and the one that you would really need to learn about if you want to sound like a British native. So where words end with ER, for example, we don't really pronounce that R again. It has more of an a uh sound, as in umbrella. So rather than saying together and pronouncing that R, or like in American English saying together, in British English we say together. So you can hear it in words such as together, brother, mother. So I hope you can hear that at the end there. That is the schwa sound, so it's more of an uh sound. You'll hear it in other words as well, not just words that end with ER. For example, you'll hear it in survive. So we don't say survive, we say survive. It's very, very subtle. So next we're going to travel up north and take a look at the Manchester accent, which we actually call a Mancunian accent. We're going to take a little look at Liam Gallagher, who does have quite a strong accent, but we're going to look at how he pronounces some words. So as I mentioned before, even in Cockney London accent, the H at the start of words is often not sounded out and you'll hear Liam Gallagher do that as well in this clip. So instead of saying have, he'll say av. So instead of saying I had a good time, some people might say I had a good time. Now, this is exciting. I mean, this is amazing. I find this remarkable because it's your birthday. You know a big what? day, you're making a big fuss of it. You're, you're being looked after. I've got a gig in Manchester, so I'm grafting. So uh, I'll have a few beers. I'll raise a few glasses to myself later on. That, but I'm not going to go into heavy that. Another interesting word that he pronounces here is glasses. So he actually says glasses. And this is really more in North of England, as well as Scotland and Wales. It's only more in the South, and in particular London, where we say these words with a longer R sound. So generally in Britain, you'll hear words like glass, dance, pass, with a shorter A sound, glass, dance, pass. But in London, and of course with the RP accent, we have that elongated R sound. I'll have a few beers, I'll raise a few glasses to myself later on. That, but... Did you notice how instead of saying myself, he actually said myself? Now, I think historically this was an influence from Irish English because in the north of England, especially Liverpool, it's very close to the, um, to the sea and very close to Ireland. And so over time, the Irish actually influenced the way that Brits would say particular words. So definitely in the north of England, you will hear people often say myself instead of myself. So we're now going to journey back down a little bit in between London and Manchester to Birmingham. So Birmingham is found in the Midlands 
and we're going to be looking at a clip from Peaky Blinders. Now it's worth noting that even I struggle to understand them when they speak sometimes on Peaky Blinders and I do actually watch the show with subtitles to make sure I don't miss anything. But if you do ever visit Birmingham itself, you'll find this accent is not quite as strong as in the show and you will understand people a lot better. So one thing that's really distinctive in this accent is the way they pronounce the uh sound. So it's that U sound that's found in the middle of words or sometimes at the start. And in London, for example, we would pronounce this as uh. So when I say us, it has that sound that you would associate with the letter. But here you can hear them say us. That way now it's for sale. Everything's for sale to us, Arthur. <clears throat> We're making a lot of money these days. We need a legitimate business to pass the money from the shop. Well, we know what to do. You spend two thirds of your life in pubs, just pour it instead of drinking it. But you can still drink it, all right? Your pub, you do what you want. And you hear it in the way that they say pub as well. So in the south of England, we would say pub. But as you can hear in the Birmingham accent, we can hear pub. So it has more of an uh sound, quite a short uh sound, maybe as in good. This sound is synonymous with more northern accents. You will hear it the further north you go up um, in the British Isles. So it's not just a Birmingham accent, but here it is very, very strong. We're making a lot of money these days. So you'll notice that any time the word of is said, it actually connects with the word before and after it. So we don't actually hear the v sound. So when he says, a lot of money, it sounds like a lot of money. So it's more of a connected speech. And here are some examples to see that even further. Give me a bottle of whiskey and uh, three glasses, please. Scotch or Irish? Irish. Rumours that there was a robbery. Robbery of what? Guns, Mr. Shelby. A serious amount of guns. And what business is that of mine? You can also hear this when he says a lot of money. So rather than saying a lot of money, he says a lot of money. So again, he's just shortening it. It makes it easier to say. And again, that you will find a lot in Birmingham. You spend two thirds of your life in pubs, just pour it instead of drinking it. Did you also notice the way that he said pour it? So when we say pour, it has more of an elongated sound. But if you hear the way that Thomas Shelby says it in this clip, he says pour it. So again, it has more of an ooh sound, but they also roll the R ever so slightly. So you do hear the R sound a lot more than you would with an RP accent or a more London or Southern accent. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about British English and also the difference between this and American English, I highly recommend that you listen to our podcast where Ethan and I actually went through a whole load of different words that are different in Britain and America. So you can check out in the description box below that link so you can listen to it after this lesson. So we're now going to travel a little bit further west to Wales. And did you know that Catherine Zeta-Jones is in fact Welsh? You may not have realized because her accent is probably not quite as strong now from living in America for so long, but she is in fact from Wales. Now in this clip, she describes the Welsh accent and I really like the way that she describes it because she says that it's sing-songy. Now, what does that mean? If someone describes something as sing-songy, they mean that it sounds like a song. So as you can hear in this clip, the way that she talks, there's a lot of intonation and it does very much sound very sing-songy. 
<laughs> what does a Welsh accent actually sound like? Okay, so I'll say, hello, Craig, how are you today? The weather's lovely here in oh, New York. it's lovely, yes. And you say, oh, so, shut up, you're not Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a Welsh language that actually is very similar to your yes, Welsh language. Yes, it is, language. that's right. I mean, not even an accent, we're talking, you know, language. Um, but it's very lilty and sing-songy. And it's very difficult accent for actors to do. When they try and do a Welsh accent, they always end up sounding Pakistani, don't they? Or Indian, <laughs> That's yeah. true. They I think that this is probably the best way to describe the Welsh accent, but it is also important to know that, again, depending whether you're in the north or the south of Wales, the accents will be very different. I do find that they are a lot stronger in the south of Wales than they are in the north, and the north, as it's so close to Liverpool and Manchester, does have a little bit more representation of these two accents. So in this next clip from one of my favourite British TV series, Gavin and Stacey, Stacey is in fact from Wales and you will hear a stronger Welsh accent here. So let's see what you think. And I thought, well, I'm too early for lunch and I'm too late for breakfast, so I just had a banana. But if anything, that made me more hungry. So I ended up having a sandwich, some cereal and a yoghurt, which is brunch, isn't it? So I rang my mum and I said, I've just had my first ever brunch. So we're now moving further north, all the way to Scotland. And here you will hear a Glaswegian accent, which means this person is from Glasgow. He is probably the most successful football manager in the history of the game, Sir Alex Ferguson. And what, is retirement what you thought it would be? I mean, I know you're still very busy, but were, were there things you were looking forward to that you just thought, well, that'll be, I'll do that in retirement? Definitely. Yeah, everyone's got bucket lists, of course. But I looked forward to it and also I made sure I was going to be active. And, you know, difference being was I maybe waking up during the night and I put the television on. Now, you'll probably notice in this clip that many sounds within words are unstressed. So it can be quite difficult to actually understand sometimes what is being said. For example, the way that he says, definitely. So you can hear that I'm pronouncing most of the sounds in that word, definitely. But here he says it's so fast, it's very easy to miss it. He says, definitely. So it's quite tricky to understand sometimes what is being said. Do that in retirement. Definitely. You will also notice with a Scottish accent that the R sound is more prominent. At times they tend to roll the R, not so much, but definitely maybe that one time so that you do hear it a little bit more. I do believe that in TV series and movies, sometimes this accent is exaggerated and a little bit overdone because they don't roll the R's that much, but you can hear it there a little bit. Yeah, everyone's got bucket lists, of course. This is in fact called a tapped R. So you'll hear it in words such as bright. So in Scotland, you'd hear it more as bright. And words such as red. So they would say red. So you can hear that I am rolling that R a little bit, but not too much. So it's called a tapped R. Another interesting thing to note about the Scottish accent is the way that they say words such as good, and food and mood. So that double O sound in British English is most commonly that sound, an oo sound. Mood, food. But in Scottish accents, you will hear that shorter sound as in good. So they will say food rather than food. So as you've hopefully learned in today's lesson, you will see that all around Britain there are so many different accents, so many that we couldn't even cover them all in today's lesson. So we just picked a handful for you just to get started so that you can understand more native English. So if you'd like to learn more British English, I highly recommend that you check out our playlist to learn more about this. And hopefully in the future, we'll bring some more lessons to you to do with British accents and pronunciation.